17, verses 16 and 25. For 40 days the Philistine came forward every morning and evening and took his stand. Now the Israelites had been saying, Do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. How would y'all like to get that deal? <laughs> exempt from taxes in all the land in Israel. And a wife. And a wife. I'm going to invite you to pull out your uh, bulletin on the inside flap. There's a place for you to take some notes. Uh, I do not have fill in the blanks this week, but there are some things that uh, that I think <coughs> that I that I think might be good to, to write down. But write down anything that you feel that God is leading you to do. Let's pray. Gracious God, we thank you that you are here. May the meditations of our mind. And may the words of this mouth be pleasing unto you and help us to hear your voice today. Amen. Amen. So we have been, we are now in week number four of a seven-part series in the story of David and Goliath. Who knew it could take seven weeks to talk about this story? I mean, most of the time we hear it, <clears throat> most of the time we hear it, and, and we look at the long narrative, and, and we've said before that you're going to hear people say, you be David, you get up there and you fight your way in order to win because you need to live a life in victory. But we also said, too, that you are not David in this story. We are the Israelite army who watches Jesus Christ win our battle. So we do not have to fight for victory in any part of our lives. We live from a place of Victory, so we can have true freedom over anything that may come to taunt us or to try to hold us back. We've talked about uh, <clears throat> the giant of fear and how when we find our security and, and, and rest in the perfect love of God, his perfect love casts out all fears because it shows us the light all around us that sometimes the monsters are not as bad as they seem. We talked about the giant of rejection, how we can feel like we are being rejected, how we can reject other people, how there are times where we can feel like God may be rejecting us. But we understand that we have been created by God to do incredible works. We, we, we talked about how we do not find our security in what other people say about us, but we find our security in who God says we are. And we did... <clears throat> We talked about Jesus' baptism. Where hear the words of God speaking to Jesus, but hear them saying that him, them, these words to you as well. You are his child, his dearly beloved, with, with whom he is well pleased. Next week, we talk about a giant of anger. This week, we're going to talk about an unsuspecting giant. A giant that may seem like it's good on the surface, but is really one that will kill us faster than anything. And it's the giant of comfort. So I have a question for you. What are some things in your life, or what are some routines in your life that you have to make your life easy? So just think about it. <clears throat> what are some routines or things that you have in your life that make your life easy? For me, part of the reason that I do not use paper notes is because I tend to flip things over. I will get excited. I'll lose my place or anything like that. And my iPad keeps everything nice and neat for me personally. I like to wake up with uh, and, and have cold and hot water. I like indoor plumbing. I like a refrigerator. I like a washer and dryer. I like being able to go to the store and get milk or butter or whatever it is and not have to worry about making it all the time. I like going into the closet and saying, what do I want to wear today? And then I choose something, and then I go ask Amanda if I can wear it. 
and I go back and find something else. <laughs> We all like to be comfortable. Because comfort really is something good, right? It helps us live in safety. It helps us have conveniences so we can kick back, relax, maybe go to the lake, <clears throat> and, and, and just kind of enjoy the day. Comfort, when we live a life of comfort, it helps us live in financial security so we're able to provide for our family and we're able to have fun in this life. Comfort helps us because we like things to go smoothly. We don't like rough patches in our day, do we? <clears throat> and oftentimes, if things don't go as smoothly as possible, what do we say at the end of the day? I had a rough day. Right? But see, here's the truth. God never calls us to be comfortable. God calls us to be faithful. God never calls us to be comfortable. God always calls us to be faithful. So I want you to think of a time when you stepped out in faith and realized that God was giving you his blessings, which is his peace, his presence, his provisions, just because you did what he asked. Think about when you had to step out in faith, knowing it would not be comfortable, but you did it anyway, trusting that God would provide. <clears throat> I mean, you know, I taught martial arts for several years, and, and I practiced it for 15 years. I taught it professionally for 11 years, and, and, and I stopped doing it because I felt like God was leading me into ministry. You know, I, I was able to travel to different parts of the country. I was able to give seminars. I was able to basically do whatever I wanted whenever I wanted, and then all of a sudden, God, in his wickedly sense of humor, said, I am calling you into ministry, and I went, okay, what does that mean? And he said, just follow him. I said, okay. <clears throat> so I stopped doing martial arts in, at the end of May, on May 31st of that year. And then throughout the summer, I would help a friend of mine at his, at his Taekwondo school. And, and I would teach a little bit for him just to, just to kind of uh, help, help him out because he asked me to. <clears throat> but then in September of that year, I stopped. I didn't feel like I needed to do it anymore. And then I, then I felt a leading that I needed to restart a youth group at a, at a church. So that's when I began the, my time as a youth director. That first year as a youth director, I lived on mileage. I found ways to make sure that I had at least a little bit of money on a paycheck. So I was making less than $200 a month for that first year. As, as being in ministry. I don't know how it happened, but somehow I was able to eat every day. I did not miss out on anything. I did not miss out on a car payment. I did not miss out on insurance. I did not miss out on, on gas. God provided some people in my life to help me out, but I was not without anything I needed. Because, see, the truth is, God will never let us down. God will never let us down. It can feel that way when we seek after what we want rather than what he has provided. If we're seeking after our own desires and we don't get it, we can easily think, he should have given that to me. It would have made this so much easier. But God does not call us to be comfortable. God calls us to be faithful. So we continue to step out in faith. Now we said that comfort can be a good thing. But see, the trouble comes when we become complacent <clears throat> or indifferent to following what God says to do. And that means when we desire safety and security and those become the dominant things in our life. Think about how many ads are on daytime TV for, uh, a, to, to get people to buy a security system and, and use fear to try to get you to do it. That is seeking to live in, in a place where we find our own security. <clears throat> when we become too relaxed to God's voice. So let me ask you this. When was the last time you were able to read scripture without getting bored because you did not understand what was being said? When was the last time you came to worship and said, you know, I really didn't like that worship service today. 
a guy named Francis Chan. He wrote a few books. He, he has a great line, and I love it. He said, that's okay. You didn't have to like worship. We weren't worshiping you anyway. <laughs> Comfort causes us to think about us. It keeps the focus on us, our preferences, what we like, what we don't like, what, what, <clears throat> what will help us instead of thinking about how God is asking us to use it to bless other people. And comfort is the scariest and most deceptive giant because it causes us to miss out on the very best that God has for us because we end up settling for something that is easy or what we perceive as good. In that moment, it causes us to think that our life is good the way it is and that we have to seek more ways for our life to be comfortable. How can comfort be harmful to us? So go ahead and ask me that. Say, how can comfort be bad? That's a great question. I am glad you asked that today. If we reject an idea or an opportunity, whatever, because we say that we don't have enough or we don't like it. We might actually miss the work that God wants to do in and through us by stepping out in faith and so we can see, so he can show us how he's going to provide. We can buy into the idea or the lie that we only have to work hard for a season of life. And then we say, I'll relax and do whatever I want. And when I, after I work hard, after I do everything I want to do, then I will volunteer. I will do stuff for God. I will be more active in the church. I, I will give more just to make sure after I have what I need. But see, the number one factor in all of this is making sure that we get what we want. Another way that comfort can be bad is if we grow so accustomed to our sin that we fail to confront it and get rid of it. See, God is not wanting us to miss out on the real abundant life. An abundant life is not found in our financial security. Abundant life is not found in what we can do. Our eternal reward and our eternal joy is actually not robbed by bad stuff like being a drug dealer or, or, or murder or being an alcoholic or going to jail or whatever. Our chance... For a meaningful life and a happy, joyful forever is robbed by our present comfort, which causes us to be complacent or have indifferent views towards other people. God is calling us to be faithful and to find our security in what he provides. <clears throat> On our first date, well, I say it's a first date. Amanda says first time we got together. Potato, potato. I'm speaking, so I'm right. So, um, <laughs> I love, I'll hear about this later. I love looking at nature. I love looking at nature. And it, it, it was cold that day, y'all. In, in, in fact, it was four years ago today. And it was cold. We went to a duck pond. Did I say it was cold? And so she's standing there. She's wondering who on earth I, I am, what kind of person I am, and everything. But what, what got her is how I would look at that duck pond. And I would go down low, and, 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 I, would, and I would show her, look, look how when the ducks move, the, the water moves around. Look, at, look how the ripple effect of the water. And I, and I love looking at nature in that way, you can look at birds that build the net, their nest, and how they're preparing each and every stick and each and every twig and making it just right for their young. And then it comes time for the young birds to hatch and to fly from the nest. Those ducks could be safe in that water. The young birds be safe if they stay in that nest. <clears throat> But neither one of them does what God's created them to do if they stay put and they don't fly. That is a picture of the Christian life. We can stay and live lives of comfortableness. Or we can fly and see how far God causes us to soar. See how many lives we can impact. See how we can step out in faith. 
Because we are meant to find our security in God and how he provides for us. How he gives us the eyes to see the world. How he gives us everything we need in order to fly. Now here are some tough things that we all need to hear. And there's some lies that we have bought into. And I would not be a good pastor if I let us continue believing these lies. Number one. There's, there's two lies we're going to talk about real quick. Number, number one is that we see people all the time, and we hear how people are not interested in coming to church. We, see how, we hear how people are not interested in hearing about Jesus Christ. But see, the issue is not that people are not listening. The issue is that they have been listening to what they've been told. Because too many people believe what they are told, that they are perfect just the way they are. And hear this. Perfect people do not need Jesus. But are we perfect? <clears throat> I don't ever tell my kids they're perfect. They are perfect in our family. And they are perfect because God created them. But God is still working on them. We are not perfect. We all need Jesus. So let's not be afraid to tell the truth about why we need Jesus, how we are not perfect, how we all sin. And then we'll hear people say, <clears throat> this is going to be a fun one for y'all, so just buckle up. <clears throat> You'll hear people talk about tithing. And what do people do when, when, when the pastor starts talking about tithing? Yeah. He has about three more minutes and then I'm gone. Or they begin looking around. Okay, good. Sue's uncomfortable too, so I'm okay. Oh, see, there's no one blocking that door. I think we can make it in time to get everything for the Super Bowl tonight. But see, here's the thing about tithing. You have heard people say, take incremental steps to work our way up to tithing. It's okay to do what you can right now. Do you want to know the truth? Nowhere is that found in Scripture. Because the issue with this thinking is that Jesus never said, follow me however you can. And that's okay right now. You'll, you'll get better at it. Jesus said, follow me. He said this other phrase too, take up your cross and follow me. So to live the life of Jesus means we have to crucify ourselves and our possession, our passions rather, and live a life for God. Live a victorious life for God. Je remember, Jesus even turned away people who wanted to finish up some things that they had to do. Jesus asked for it all. He asked for everything because it's his. He asked for it all at once. So we should fully tithe. And you know what? It's going to be uncomfortable, but I promise you that God's going to take care of you. That, that, that I, I would recommend doing at least a full 10%. My family and I live on 80 to 85% of my income from your generosity at this church. We have everything we need because God has provided each and every step of the way. We may not have enough time to volunteer or, or I don't want to work with a certain people group. That's okay. You're not there for the people. You're there because God is wanting to do something in and through you. God may be speaking to you to say, hey, you know what? This, these teenagers really aren't that bad. This, this, <clears throat> um, these, these, these people that I've been running away from my whole life really aren't that bad. And God softens our hearts because he, just like he did with Peter, he reminds us that we cannot call unclean what he has called clean. So we take up our cross and follow him daily. Comfort also causes us to live with an entitlement mentality. I am entitled to good health. I am entitled to make a living. I am entitled to my own feelings and opinions, even when they're going to shut every other person down. But see, when we live a life of entitlement, we are actually robbing God because we hoard for ourselves what is actually his. And the truth is we're not entitled to anything. Everything we have is a gift of God, and it is only because of his grace that we are able to have this comfortable life that we have. 
The reason I tell you all of this is because I am not going to stand in the way of your blessings that God wants to give you. I am not going to stand up here and say, you can do this, it's, it's okay. I'm going to try to present as best and clearly as I can the full gospel of how God wants everything from us. And I hope and pray that, that we choose him no matter where we are in our walk of life. Because God gives his blessings when we step out in faith and follow him. So we have to trust that God is going to provide because he already has. See, being a Christian is not like joining this prestigious country club. It's, it's not joining and getting a nice pen or certificate or whatever they do. <clears throat> being a Christian means taking off our nice things. Being a Christian means putting on servants' clothes. And as we serve, we understand what God meant, what Jesus meant when he said the first will be last, and the last will be first. People will know we are Christians by our love. Love, love is not a position, a, 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 a position of grandeur. Love is in the position of a servant to do what the people need. Now, the Israelites. Have we paid attention to the story of the Israelites? How many days were they there and Goliath was just taunting them? If you say 40, you're right. How many days were they there? 40. 40. They were there 40 days and they did nothing. They did nothing. <clears throat> and Saul even tried to bribe them with this incredible life of comfort. He said, look, the, the man that goes out there and defeats this ogre was going to get my daughter in marriage, and, and, and you're going to be rich. You will not have to pay any taxes in all of Israel. They did not go for 40 days. Why would they not do that? Fear. <clears throat> the giant of rejection would have been in their way. Maybe they were a little too comfortable and they did not want their pride to show them that they could not do it. But see, they stayed in the safety of their camp for 40 days. On day 41, everything changed. Because they did not do what they were going to do, what they were supposed to do. This young shepherd boy with no wartime experience came out to show them. And he goes out and he wins. See, <clears throat> God's work will always get done in God's way. My prayer is that we always find ways to allow him to use us so we don't miss out on his power and provision in his life. Our faith in God will grow in our dis. Our faith in God grows in our discomfort. When we don't think like we have everything we need, we fully rely on God even more. Because the true point of our lives is not to give us glory. The true point in our lives is to give Jesus all the glory. So we realign our lives with God. We realign our life with Scripture and do what Jesus said and follow him each and every step of the way. And we understand this. Tomorrow is never promised. Life is short. We, we can't say, I'll do this tomorrow, because James says, tomorrow's not promised. But if you say, it's the will of God, we can make this happen. Life is short, but God is big. If we trust him in our present, God will continue to work in us and through us in the future. See, the enemy wants us to stay comfortable and live only for ourselves. But why do we keep listening to the voice of a defeated giant? Why do we keep listening to the voice of the enemy who has been defeated? See, our goal should never settle for comfort or to focus on what we don't have. That's a scarcity mentality. But instead, our goal should always be to follow Christ and on what God is doing and what he is providing. So as Jesus said, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added unto you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We are to...